but it, it landed big. They managed to do that so eloquently and just it's so emotionally triggering. If there's a most stressful movies list, I think this would go on. It's very stressful at times. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cinefix Top 100, our perpetual motion train circling a frozen and dead earth until we're able to watch 100 of the best movies ever made. I'm Clint Gage, and with me, as always, is Cinefix's executive bug chef, Alex Stedman. Thank you for saying the full title. You're welcome, yeah. and congratulations on the promotion, Thank by you. the way. And, of course, Ed Harris's tiny little child hands, Michael Calibro. Ooh, how how you doing, bud? Good, man. How else do you expect this train to move if I don't... You know, have this You're important. small You're child important. hands. You just got those tiny little child hands. They're yeah. in there making the train go. Doing their thing. Forever. Forever. <laughs> yeah. For as long as we need it to anyway. Um, so as usual here on the Top 100, we have no idea where today's film uh, ranks no. on the list. Uh, all we do know is that our producer Dan has left an envelope here with that information uh, sequestered and I am not allowed to open it. Uh, and then he left. He just no, left. he's Dan. I guess well, he, he left a, like an auxiliary Dan, but that's that There is counts. an auxiliary Dan here, yes. um, But anyway, th that's all just intended to manufacture some drama. So I think we could probably just skip past it for now. And let's start talking about the movie we're here to talk about today, which is City of God. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Grammar. How uh, just general thoughts about this movie before we even get going? Do you I, love it? I love it. Are you okay it. with it? Ah, oh, dude. Crime drama. You know, like a, it's your, a crime a, a, epic, a, a, a Scorsese clone crime drama that's like <laughs> solid. Like this is this movie is made for me. Yeah, no, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. So just to dig into the pedigree of this film, uh, you know, made in 2002. It's a Brazilian film from directors Fernando Morales. Morales. And Morales. Morales. Pretty sure it's Morales. Morales. That's what that's what YouTube told me. Fernando Morales. Fernando Morales. Okay. Uh, and co-directed by Katia Lund. It's loosely based on some real events in. Um, the favela of the city of God, which is just outside of Rio mm -hmm. in Brazil, uh, and the drugs and the violence and everything that took over through the 60s, 70s, and kind of into the 80s. Like, because like you said, it's an epic crime drama, spans multiple decades. It's a, it covers a lot of time. It moves this real movie. fast. Yeah. 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 And it moves at a good clip yeah. for a two hour movie that covers 30 it's years. It's tight. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, you know, it was a little movie, an in, independent movie coming out of coming out of Brazil, but it, it landed big. Yeah. Right? Like, Ended up getting nominated for four Academy Awards that year in, I guess, the 2003 Academy Awards, mm -hmm. including Best Cinematography, which... Well earned. That was a nomination I wholeheartedly co Wait, wait. Do you have right. what it lost to? Uh, no, I don't. I'll, I'll keep... Look, I'll look yeah. that up, look right it up. Now. I'll yeah. keep going down this list. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a very cool looking movie. We it can really talk is. more about that in the in the art of the scene section here in a minute. But then the... Uh, also nominated for Adapted Screenplay, because mm -hmm. loosely based on real events, but also... Uh, from a, a novel, best-selling novel that came that was from a couple years prior to this. Mm -hmm. um, film editing, which is another technical category. We can talk more about that in the art of the scene as well because it is cut. It's, this movie is pretty it's cool. So well it's edited. so well done. Yeah. It, it's yeah. a big part of what makes it so successful. Yeah. It's, you know, it's funny watching it now because it the editing style of the film, re-watching it now, for, at, at first blush felt dated. Yeah. But also, you kind of have to remember, like, then I'm trying to remember, like, no, 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 it, that was that was kind of on the wave of that particular editing style that yeah. became kind of more imitated. Yeah. Um, but either way, couple, couple of fun facts here on oh. the, ed on the editing, on the editing front, at least. Right. Well, let me just double check something here. It is, uh, he, she, the editor was nominated, nominated against Delma Schumacher, who, uh, <laughs> you want to, I'm just confirmed. She was, she was cutting. She, um, I know she's like Scorsese's go-to uh -huh. film editor. Yeah. Assuming and she it's did, Gangs of New York. Yeah, it is oh. Gangs of New York. And she did, and like she was. So he was nominated against Thelma Schumacher, who was up for Games of New, Gangs of New York. But like, listen, I'm going to be talking a lot about how similar this is to Goodfellas, and yeah. to just be nominated in the same category as a as a film editor for Goodfellas. Yeah, is awesome. But they both lost to Martin Walsh, who was editing Chicago. Oh, Chicago. Yeah, I'm, I, I was yeah. going to be mad, but I Chicago was very well edited. I'm willing yeah, to, a musical with a good editor is, is, yeah. is something. Yeah. And yeah. you know who won on cinematography? Who? Conrad I Conrad L. Hall mm -hmm. for, Road Hall. To Perdition, for Road to Perdition. I like that. 
Man. Man, Conrad Hall was one of the guys. He was on uh, uh, what's his, Bill Butler's crew on Jaws. Did, didn't like his whole camera crew end up becoming yeah. Academy Award nominated DPs? Oh, pretty I much. Think. Yeah, I don't know. We'll cover Jaws at some point on this. I'm show. sure we'll we talk will. About yeah. That. yeah, Michael Ballhaus, 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 Ballhaus. Yeah, also nominated for Gangs of New York. So like the whole it's good. Quite- the whole yeah. Goodfellas Scorsese team is just including like... Including the Brazilian yeah. version of the Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure there was a lot of talk about that yeah. <laughs> yeah. like Gangs of New York. No, it's hard yeah. to do research about this movie without running into oh, yeah. the like Goodfellas comparisons and the Tarantino comparisons, yeah. which I don't entirely I don't, get. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. That either. Yeah. But um, the other thing that it got nominated for, the fourth nomination, was Best Director, which was Fernando Morales. And fun fact, he was actually nominated against against the guy who directed that movie, Goodfellas. Scorsese. That guy. Let me de- let me double check. <laughs> I don't know. Let me, let me double check who that was. Scorsese's uh, got that bad habit of not actually getting nominated for the movies that everybody else yeah. on his team got nominated for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, this is the last time this happens, right? Like, because then two movies later, it's The Departed, and he, and he finally wins. gets yeah. his due, right? Holy shit! He yeah, no, he was he was he was he lost to Polanski. Oh. oh. For the was it the piano? Yep, pianist. Yep. The pianist. Not the piano. No, the piano. Just the piano. piano. There's a different joke. There's a different one. There's yeah. a different yeah. joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but point is, uh, let's just to uh, get us back yeah. on the Snowpiercer track here. Um, <laughs> Fernando Morales was nominated for Best Director. Yeah. Not Katya Lund. Which I was so mad about when I found out. I I was very confused about that because yeah. I don't remember this this happening uh, really at all. But she was billed as a, uh, credited as a co-director. Which is not an entirely unusual thing, right. um, particularly in um, Brazilian cinema at the time, the Brazilian film industry at the time, and because so many of the those movies were sort of produced by the people directing them, also, mm-hmm. yeah. The and so the jobs just the job was just huge yeah. to get one of these movies going, and so Fernando Morales. Uh, you know, brought in Katya. Fernando Morales owned the rights to to adapt the book. Meanwhile, Katya Lund did a documentary about all the drugs and violence in the favelas called uh, New News from a Personal War. War okay. what it was called. And so they got together to work on the thing together. And everything that I read, like everybody from the top down, from Morales to everybody, talked about the contribution of Katya Lund. It's not mm-hmm. that she's like getting punted off to the side. Yeah. It's like a paperwork issue with the Academy. Like right. They just don't and there's so many of those. Co-director. Yeah. So. But no, the thing is, like, why I was so mad that she wasn't uh, nominated was because, like, from what I understand, she really brought that kind of like realness from the favelas. Yeah. Um, and that's one of one of the great things about this movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, it seemed like like Morales had literally never set foot. Right. In a favela. So he needed he, her. So he yeah. needed, yeah. He and talked, so ooh, he, it was not, what's that? I was just going to say, he talks pretty openly about how he came from like a middle class yep. Brazilian lifestyle mm-hmm. and just had yep. no idea about this world until he started thinking about making this. Right. Yeah. Right. So there's no, um, I, there was an, uh, an interesting quote from her when she found out about the nomination and or the lack of a nomination for her. And she was like, you know, I could be mad about it. And I could like ruin because everybody was so shocked that the movie was being recognized like this. And she, mm-hmm. I, the way that she put it was something along the lines of like, this is like if Brazil went to the World Cup and I tried to ruin it for everybody. Yeah. And so like in the moment, she was just like <laughs> just right. happy for everybody Good for her. And, and all of that. But um, it didn't seem like there was there was much bitterness about it, which is I, you know, I mean, up, entirely up to her, obviously. You know what I just realized? So this movie wasn't nominated for foreign language film? Uh, it wasn't. Was it not submit? I wonder if it's like an RRR uh, situation it might, where it, it just might. wasn't submitted by the country. It wasn't. It wasn't even Brazil's choice. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Let me it, see here. We're it, all it, scrolling. It, 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 it yeah. was not. No. No. Yeah. It was just the four. The four Academy Awards. Huh. Director, screenplay, cinematography, and uh, editing. In terms of the in terms of the other the creatives in this movie, I mean, Morales did the Constant Gardener mm-hmm. next. And then the only other thing that I that I really recognize from him uh, was the two popes from just a couple of years ago. Yeah, which surprised me. There's not, not yeah. a ton in between. Yeah. Um, but uh, I did read that after he did City of God, he was prepping Intolerance Two, which was sort of sort of a sequel yeah. to D.W. Griffith, but it was it was a joke. Calling that was calling it that was kind of a joke that he wanted to to keep. But it was it was going to be kind of a he described it as a comedy drama, which I assume would have been some type of satire. But either way, like a big epic satire of D.W. Yeah. Griffith's intolerance, like I from the guy that made City of God. Yeah, I would, I would be been. here for that. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I'm sure he was able to do a lot more after City of God. 
Because he didn't have a he, lot before he, City of God. No, and no. He, yeah. I mean, he didn't do a ton after either. Yeah, I mean, he did. He did the Constant Gardener, um, Blindness. Remember the movie where Julianne Moore and Mark Ruffalo, everybody just starts going blind. blind. Yeah, that, that was him. So a lot of the, a lot of uh, you know social commentary uh, kind of yeah. kind of work, but. Um, Anyway, I do know I, he was a big ad guy and you definitely see that in this movie. Like oh, it yeah. feels like a bunch of little ads, like almost like spliced together. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is one of the reasons I like it. But then the other, the other creatives, uh, in this, uh, you, we already talked about Katya Lund and her, her contribution. Yeah. Apparently she worked with the actors more than Marvel I believe did, it. I mean, she knows like, that she, was yeah, there she knew it better. Yeah. yeah. Um, but speaking of the actors, mm-hmm. apparently most of them were, were non actors. Yeah. There was, uh, the guy that played carrot, yeah. was had some acting experience and some other people like alice braga was in the in the film and she's gone on to she still has a yep. good career she's working all the time mm-hmm. um sue jorge also yeah sue george is uh he's sue george yeah the I'm guy i'm terrible that, at names uh, yeah, yeah i probably am too uh but the guy that did all those david bowie covers for the life aquatic yep knockout yeah Ned. he's playing his knockout, playing knockout Ned. Ned. So and he was honestly i feel like one of like the breakout stars from oh, this movie about, that i'm gonna actor. talk about him a lot yeah, yeah. no he's talking about this. him right now yeah this is i mean want, this is my art of the scene stuff oh here. okay well yeah. never mind we'll yeah. save it but i do love knockout Ned. i'm sure we'll talk about him a lot yeah. i mean as far as like the no name like the young kids who just came up from nothing like lil z like if you watch that like, oh, yeah. city of god 10 years later it's just like you watch the actor playing little z standing next to murals of his character all around all around his neighborhood oh stuff that's like that. crazy I, I never watched it yeah. yeah i did reading about the reaction to this movie in brazil like locally is because yeah. pre- apparently the the then president of brazil reached out to morales to talk about like your movie has like made him change his policies and stuff oh. like that like how they go about policing and and all yeah uh so like you know the movie in terms of like raising awareness of things that were going on yeah. in the in the favelas was uh, well that's and it's uh interesting too because one thing i noticed re-watching it again yesterday is that the police don't really have a big presence in this movie like they're in like the beginning and the end and then otherwise they're basically fending for themselves yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like, what, they're, they're, they're there to get paid off yeah, you know like yeah, yeah. They, they pop, pop they pop, pop occasionally up, yeah, to, to, get paid to yeah yeah grease some palms but uh but outside of that yeah uh, i mean thematically that that makes a lot of sense you know that's nice but we can also i mean let's let's talk about we touched on it a little bit but let's talk about the goodfellas of it all like Mm -hmm. this movie is i think compared very favorably to to goodfellas Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it does i mean a it's a movie about the drug trade yeah b it's about the rise and fall of um some drug deal like of criminals like aspiring criminals yeah like one of the things that I always like about Goodfellas more than I like The Godfather is The Godfather tries to be more like, you know, operatic. You know, it's a big story about family and like the weight of family. Mm-hmm. And what's really cool about like Goodfellas is like these guys just like being criminals. Yeah. And that is exactly what this movie is. And it's like, you know, it has that from the get go. This movie has that same vibe. Ever since I was a kid, I always knew I wanted to be literally yeah. says yeah. that. Yeah. Like, I think yeah. depending on the SRT file you yeah. use to watch the, yeah. the movie, like, you mean the official SRT file? Yes. O lance da padaria também não deu certo. A mina do caixa era muito gostosa. E ela me deu mó mole. Me liga, tá? Not only is this movie excellent, right? But mm-hmm. I think like you know, this movie was like so successful that like it also spawned like kind of a genre it's in and of itself, right? Like Brazilian drug movies started to become like a thing. Like, you know, I don't think without City of God, like the Elite Squad movies would have gotten a lot of mm. recognition. And like without like the uh, Elite Squad movies made by Jose Padilla, but Padilla, 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 you had Padilla and Watt Wagner Mora, like they wouldn't have had Narcos on Netflix, which is the source of a ton of great uh pablo escobar beams mm-hmm. yeah you know and like, also a very good show in its own right yeah. yeah but like all of that started because you know that uh jose padilla started making like brazilian drug dramas yeah in the wake of city of god and it's not like those movies are any better or worse like mm-hmm. elite squad 2 and elite squad are excellent films yeah. that are also worth checking out 
Yeah, well, I'm glad you said that because, like, as much as we talk about, like, how, like, you know, City of God is a Scorsese clone, like, it was, like, I wouldn't say it's derivative, but it also inspired a lot. Like, it was also very influential as much as it took inspiration. Yeah, there, I mean, reading a lot of interviews with Morales around the time, he was also talking about, you know, in years past, they were making five, six movies a year mm -hmm. in Brazil. And then they were making, after this, they were making, like, 40. Yeah. yeah. And, I, like, and I, other, yeah. you know, uh, not just Brazilian filmmakers, but people, you know, coming down to Brazil to film and like it becoming more of a thriving industry after this. So. I mean, let's be real. Like maybe if it wasn't for city of God, like uh, Dom Toretto wouldn't have found a vault to rob in Rio and then subsequently drive around the streets of Rio, you know, for fast five. Yeah. Do you, are you giving city of God <laughs> credit cinema. for fast five? No, I'm not. <laughs> well, a second there, I, want, I thought you were going to give city of want, God credit want, for Pedro I want, Pascal. I want, no, <laughs> what I want to do, what I want to do is, you know, just like, Fast Five. It's the uh, best Fast and Furious movie. I think everyone because, agrees with that. Because it takes place in Rio? Probably. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but I just, I, I really enjoy this movie. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's good. E pra mudar a sorte de Xunxê, eu vou te dar meu protetor, Xunxê. Mas Xunxê, Xunxê não pode furar um fá com a guia. Porque se os meninos furam um fá com a guia, Xunxê, Xunxê vai morrer. De menino não se chama mais dadinho. De menino chama Zé Pequeno, Zé Pequeno, Zé Pequeno pra crescer, Zé Pequeno. Baixo encher, vai com eu que eu vá com baixo encher, Zé Pequeno. Ih, ó, 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 ó. Ih, ó, 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 ó,
you don't have to shut down the whole street to do no. it. Yeah. Like, no. Mm-hmm. I will say, though, uh, with the editing and, like, that kind of handheld style, I won't argue about it feeling dated, but I don't mind that it feels dated. Well, I do think, like, there's something about the it's it's dated yes but also there's a purpose to it yeah like like i was saying it exudes earlier, like energy i agree with yeah, you. yeah, yeah it's yeah. very kinetic and it, it 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 it's it matches the energy of what's happening on screen oh right? yeah it's like it's it's chaos and it's all over and you're never quite sure what you're looking at you're never quite sure where the next person is coming from like the camera never relaxes in neither yeah do it's, I, it's yeah. a nervous movie to it's watch it's very and nervous that yeah. also speaks to how quickly it, it moves exactly. so like i i do think that there is you know, the idea that thinking about it as being dated versus w- realizing that maybe this was on the, the front edge yeah. of that trend and there were others that were sort of imitating it. There is one moment in that film where the camera doesn't move and it's actually like one of the things that I think is like most brilliantly done, which is when they decide to show the evolution of the drug trade through that one apartment. Oh, yeah. Oh. So that whole that whole sequence and why like... I am going to talk a lot about montage because I actually think like that's the thing that makes this like mm-hmm. movie very, very special is like they need to show the evolution of the drug trade and how like Lil Z becomes like the king of it. And it starts on that just that locked off static shot yeah. of yeah. the apartment. Right. And it starts with like Dona Zila and she's like selling drugs to, you know, support her family after like her husband dies and stuff like that. And like then she like has an affair like she's like having a sexual relationship with that with that guy with big boy who then gets too big and muscles her out of it so then he subsequently becomes the person and then like you know big boy like starts getting a little big and that's when he meets carrot and hires carrot to run it but then big boy doesn't pay off the cops so he gets arrested and now it's carrot's operation and that's how carrot meets blackie and then blackie like it's all a locked off shot doing like one takes there and then doing dissolves dissolves yeah. like it, and, and just even within yeah. each frame like yeah the way that, the way that it's dissolved like the right half of the and, frame yeah. the foreground dissolves yeah. before the background like and it's, through that through that locked off camera mo, mo, or that locked off camera and dissolves they go through like maybe like 10 years of like yeah the drug trade in rio and how it matures and and yeah. uh, evolves and develops and i think that's like just all through the lens of that one apartment. Yeah. And it does feel very unique because you're right. That's like the one time in the entire movie where the camera is still like, and I will like, I feel like that scene, I, I don't think the rest of the movie is very Tarantino. I think that scene is very Tarantino and everything else is pretty much Scorsese. Uh, but I really like that scene actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just creative ways to show the passage of time. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, we, t- we talked about and it developed with, character. Yeah. Right? I mean, we talked yeah. about it with the, uh, with the dusty dead brother desk too. Like just yeah. a creative way to, instead of just cutting from one thing to another, anybody can do that. Mm-hmm. Like, how are you going to show something in an engaging way that's memorable? You know, mm-hmm. and to your point about montage too, the other, I think the most iconic shot in the entire movie is the montage of Lil Z shooting down. Yes. Towards the I love all the POV just, shots. And he's just like yeah. laughing his ass off as he's shooting people oh. and, and the, the gun going in the face and the camera's shaking yeah. and, it, and it snaps between different ages of Lil Z watching yeah. him grow up, but also like tracking the fact that he has never grown up. Yeah. yeah. Like he's still behaving exactly the same way. His strategy, his whatever, however you want to put it. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of my favorite scenes too. Like the the origin story of him discovering he's a psychopath, basically. Yeah. Uh, because it for a moment just becomes like a straight up horror movie. And I actually think yeah. that little dice is arguably scarier than Lil Z. Because there's something about just watching that little child like giggle with glee as he goes around killing people and then yeah. like you know Lil Z re- it, rebrands a little bit but it's the Michael Myers effect right like yeah it, it has that same feeling at the end of like in Halloween in the beginning of Halloween where like you know the, like the little clown is murdering everybody and they pull off the mask and it's just like young Michael Myers holding the knife like, exactly there's something chilling yeah. about it oh yeah like, absolutely uh, just to draw another favorable Goodfellas comparison, one thing that this movie does really well is like, it's a, it's kind of funny. 
Oh, we, it's really it's, funny at it's times. Funny. Yeah, which you kind of like, need because so, it's so hard to watch sometimes. So the sequence yeah. in the beginning where 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 Lil Z first first kills all those people in a hotel, mm-hmm. like that's a funny sequence. Oh yeah, someone's three, like you're fat. Like, these three hoods <laughs> going in and robbing. It, it's a hotel or it's a brothel. It's or, a brothel. brothel. It's a brothel. Yeah. yeah. Um, but everybody, it's kind of a funny sequence. The way that they yeah. march through the brothel and they're slapping people around, they're making jokes, and there's one guy who's just kind of like pauses and watches what's yeah. Happening, yeah you know and like and it, it's funny and then it ends with this little kid just murdering and cold well we come well, back to it yeah i was yeah. just gonna say it's important to note that that is actually like that's exposition that's delivered well later right because yeah. like mm-hmm. that first like that for like from the perspective of everybody but little z or a little dice DC, yeah. DJ, DJ, DJ. Okay. at that time right like that's all act one setup right and then you learn that he's the murderer in act two once he assumes his position yeah. of like being the biggest bad and it's like no nah, he was actually always this way because like it flashes back it shows them it shows him being like oh shucks it sucks it i'm like the little yeah. guy they, and then like he goes in murders everybody and then like it also like closes the loop on like who killed goose because like in the beginning in act one they're just like oh like you know rocket's brother just got that just got killed by someone and no yeah, we just never saw him yeah. again like and his dad yeah. threw him out of the house and yeah. we never saw him again but then we find out what, and i guess that's i mean that's the pulp fiction comparison right there right yeah. it's like the you know we're telling point a to point d here and then later we'll go back and tell b to f and like there's different you know, non-linear editing and non-linear storytelling that tells the same story just in overlapping. And I think it really comes bit. through in like Rocket's narration too, because there are times where he's like, "Oh, and this is Knockout Ned," but you wait, he'll yeah. we'll come back yeah. to him. Like I, I, I kind of like that kind of like, like almost like meandering, like you're telling a story yeah. and coming back to it, kind of that. But I mean, I, in either way, like the that scene where where Lil Z, Lil DJ kills all of the people in oh. that hotel like regardless of what happened before it it was much lighter in tone than <laughs> than what we're doing but he's still laughing right like, yeah and so that's the that's the spooky thing is like the energy of like the ha 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 what we're, we're hoods and we're stealing it from everybody and mm-hmm. we're like this is kind of fun then to translate that to just cold-blooded murder from a child but he's still got that same energy that the older hoods have when they're stealing gas tanks yeah like, and that's the thing like so many of the the people in this movie are like victims of circumstance or doing what they have to do but like then you realize like oh we have a character who's just a serial killer like he just wants to do yeah. it Like, there's so much happening in Benny's Farewell. So first of all, it's a rockin' party. It looks like the vibes start really good. So you kind of like watch the scene knowing that things are going to go downhill. <laughs> by, by that point in the movie. Yeah, you're like, like oh, no, this is, they're having too much fun. Yeah. Um, but it starts great, you know, groovy uh, tunes. Um, and it's really good at building tension because a few things happen. So you see uh, Lil Z and Benny kind of have this argument because Lil Z wants him to stay. Benny wants to go and another gangster trope where it's like classic, like I'm finally getting out and he doesn't get out. Yeah. Um, and then you see kind of little Z and it almost kind of humanizes him in a way because you see him struggling with not being able to get a girl essentially. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And yeah. I think just before this, you see like even Benny tell him like, you need a girlfriend. man. Well, yeah, and it's Benny telling him that he's going to, he's going to leave. Like, yeah. He's like, I got to get out. I yeah. got other things I want to do with my life. Yeah. And little Z just doesn't. What strikes me about that scene and it, it's, it's all because that that scene, as much as it's about Benny's death, like I mean, that scene is is Lil Z's scene. It's right? like it's not his origin so, story, but it's where he like l- like you said earlier, like, loses his last chance. It's where he loses his last chance. It's where he loses his humanity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you get you get the feeling that he like really loved that but guy. You can yeah. See, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. He actually cares for that guy, yeah. and you can see that there's a weird bit of I mean, it might be jealousy or something. Like I don't know what I you think call it. Yeah. Yeah. He wants what his he wants what the people around him have, it's longing. and there's part of him that knows he he can't get it. So mm-hmm. if there's like an awareness of his own sort of sociopathy or whatever like yeah. you know i don't know what it is but he knows that he can't be happy in the way that benny is happy and it drives him nuts and by the way that's that a kind of a subversion of like one of the gangster tropes like he's the big bad and i feel like those in gangster movies always are like surrounded by chicks but like he just cannot talk to girls to save his life oh, well, he's insane 
yeah but yeah he's actually yeah. and he's not like not charismatic I mean, either yeah, yeah. The, the scene also does like a really good job too right of like setting up that like oh shit like is little z gonna kill benny well that's the thing so you know, again like it builds that tension, tension yeah. really well and then you see him getting rejected by uh knockout ned's girlfriend yeah. um and then you see him getting jealous of knockout ned just because he has riz mm -hmm. um and then it gets really dark because he starts making him strip in the middle of this party and yeah. you have like this weird thing where there's like two parties happening like one is just great and fun and one is really disturbing <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, the, the other thing, and it, it becomes really apparent from this moment on in the movie, like the whole back half of the movie, the crowd that's around Lil Z that is just always, always on board for whatever oh, yeah. awful you stuff Lil Z is doing. And it starts descent. with that. Yeah. It starts with that knockout net scene. I think he's making him strip. Yeah, uh, and he's 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 embarrassing him in front of everybody, and just the whole group around him that couldn't care less, wouldn't have thought twice mm -hmm. to do this. And it was like, oh, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah. Ha, ha. Yeah. And like the the hangers on for Lil Z are so loud from this moment on mm -hmm. in, in the rest of the movie. Um, yeah. That's a whole other spooky part. Yeah. But, and, but also just like parties are stressful often in general crowds are stressful <laughs> and the way they edit it so you're basically in the crowd yeah. and you're kind of like almost below it's a lot very, of the people it's, it's very, very stressful jaws let's put the camera on yeah. the surface of the water kind of exactly yeah. yeah and then don't get me started on like the strobe light effect that always gets me like no go ahead yeah it started um, on the strobe light effect no i just well first of all have you ever been in a haunted house with a strobe light it's yeah, very it's scary terrible. It's terrible. terrible um but it's just another way to build that tension because like you never know what the next shot is going to have when all you have to do is the scene prior to this or a couple of scenes prior to this is is benny and um uh, it's alice braga's character um and angelica angelica, yeah. angelica benny and angelica are they're in bed yeah. and she's like, let's get out of here. Let's go, mm -hmm. let's go be hippies on a farm commune. Like, let's do that. And he's like, yeah, let's go. And like, and so as soon as that happens, it's like, ah, oh, man, yeah, <laughs> like, I know. Like, Benny's he, about to die. And then it's just, Benny it's too. just, everybody does. He's That's great. Thing. Like, like Benny's like my, arguably, I the, love Knockout Now, but he's like arguably my favorite character. And it, like, you really feel it when he dies. And you yeah. feel, you, but you feel it too. Like everybody, you know, with the way everybody reacts to it. Cause even the, the kid that accidentally kills him, Oh, yeah. The kid that kills him is is aiming for Lil Z, Lil Z. Yeah. misses, ends up killing Benny. He goes to Carrot's place. Carrot and Benny were good friends. And Carrot is like, you just killed the coolest hood God. Well, also in his protection. Yeah. And then he shoots him. Yeah. And like, like Carrot knew that like uh, Benny was one of the reasons why Lil Z wasn't killing yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that moment, like not only is it emotional for everyone who loved Benny, but it's also like, well, that was our guardrail. Yep. Now all bets are off. It, it really turns the movie on a dime, yeah. too, because the movie becomes a different movie mm -hmm. from then on out. Oh, it totally does. Yeah. yeah. Then, then it becomes the, the war the between drug war yeah, starts. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, just another like, it kind of like harkens back to uh, early in the early in the movie when Shaggy dies. It's like you have these characters who are like so almost close to getting mm -hmm. out, and you don't. And then we were talking about um, one of the taglines for the movie. What was it? Uh, you can run the beast, from the beast, but it catches you. It and if you yeah. stay, the beast eats you. Yeah. And I feel Something like, like that. yeah, those two scenes, Benny's death and Shaggy's death really encapsulate yeah. that. You can't get out. No. Yeah. Um, but that's probably my favorite scene. I think the my favorite slash least favorite scene. Uh, Go I, on. I guess it's the it's I think the I most, know what you're going to say. The most affecting scene for me in the whole movie. The runs is when Lil Z takes a kid from his neighborhood and they they go and catch the runts the little kids that are well, and he shoots these little kids in the foot yeah. and then makes another kid kill one of the runts oh and that whole God. scene like sitting there watching it like i just know i was making this face I yeah was just grimacing the whole time because you can't and even the build-up to that scene like well, somebody comes and tells little z that the runts are causing trouble and yeah. he's like all the right shopkeeper. i'm gonna go the shopkeeper yeah I mean, it's it's standard mob stuff, right? The yeah. shopkeepers like showing up to the mob boss saying, "I need your help. Yep. These kids are, you know, they're robbing my store. Robbing my store. I can't. What do you want me to do?" And so Lil Z's got to go take care of it. Yep. Um, it's just that instead of a, a rival gang, it's a bunch of like four or five year old it's a bunch kids. Of children. It's a bunch of yeah. tiny little children. And so, um, and on their way out, there's another little kid that lives like next door to Lil Z named mm -hmm. Steak. Steak and, and fries like, hey, is my fries. favorite nickname in the movie. Hey, Steak, yeah. you want to come with us? And he's like, oh, go with you? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And he pokes his head back in his house and he says, Mom, I'm going out with my friends. <sighs> and just when he says, I'm going out with my friends, I just that part breaks me in half. It's yeah. so innocent. Like, imagine yeah. like you're like 
a kid and you're running out and some like bye mom i'll be right it's back and you come back and you've suddenly murdered another child it's, and it's such an offhanded thing that's yeah. incredibly simple but it's so powerful the way that they do it and you just and then he's just walking up because you know what's going to happen yeah because we've all seen this movie before in, yeah. in a lot of ways right i mean you know where they're headed <laughs> Vai, filha, escolhe logo, mata um cara aí, brother. Bora, filha, não tem o dia inteiro não, rapaz. Vambora, filha. Quero ver se você é do conceito agora. In the scene where they actually, he shoots these two little kids in the foot and this kid just, just bawling his like eyes. Snot, like, I've nose, seen my four year old yeah. cry like that. Yeah. Like, I don't. When you shoot your child. When I shoot my child. <laughs> no. <laughs> but like, you know, you, it, it's a scared little kid and oh my God, it's, it's just so tough to watch. It's so hard to watch. And the child actors are so, so yeah, good that, in this the scene. The performance of that kid was incredible. Oh my God. Like, like that's what makes, like, and that is like. It's, to the point where I'm like, did yeah. the squib really hurt his toes? Right. That Bad. Like, did they break his toes and right. he didn't want to say anything? Well, we'll get back to that in trivia. Yeah. Um, okay. But no, like, it's funny because, like, you watch these, the runts, and, you know, they're little menaces, essentially. Um, but that scene, it's like, oh, man, they're just kids who just cry sometimes. Like, it well, is terrible. The, what, what they're talking about beforehand, too, is, like, all of the kids. All oh, yeah. How they want to, like, come on like, on top. Oh, no, yeah. I don't want to do, like. I don't want to do, you know, shit. They, work did, they just want a little Z. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do what little Z does. I'm going to kill a guy and I'm going to take over his, his business. Yeah. Um, and then you have that parallel too at the end of the movie. It is the kids who essentially start, restart the cycle again. Like it all comes thing. back. The, the yeah. kids wandering around talking about who they're going to kill. Yeah. Like, Does anybody know how to write? Can anybody make a list of the people <laughs> we're going to kill? Like it's just, it's dark. It's upsetting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It really is. The, this isn't a moment that you remember, but I really like that they put in kind of like, cute almost like joyous moments uh so like rocket at the beach as a teenager and it's just like a like a weird little like detour where it's just like nice and 70s and they're yeah. just having fun at the beach there's a girl he's on the beach with a girl he likes yeah, yeah that's, with all. The camera. that's all it is well, yeah, yeah with the camera um, I, I love that, that that beat where he he has her boyfriend scoot back a little bit oh so that made yeah falls in front i of love that part he's not in the picture yeah, yeah. Also, um also when like the one time when they're alone and then like the runs come up and he gives them their joint to yeah. try and but get them away. Also, like him giving them that joint probably like protected him because like ev like every time they're like, oh, that guy is so cool. Yeah. Like just a series of accidents. Yeah, kept exactly. Alive. That's all Rocket does yeah. is a series you of just accidents. accidentally stay alive. Um, no, but I like that scene. And then there's this is a very tiny little scene, but I just thought it was so precious. Uh, Benny and Tiago having their little bike race. Oh, and like mm -hmm. when they were like measuring each other so he could buy Benny clothes, like I was like, oh, come on. And then I was extra sad when I read. Yeah. Yep. I got Just, one more. What is it? What you got? We got to talk about Knockout Ned's descent. Knockout Ned's a great character. I actually like went back and timed it out, right? Like we were watching that. I don't know if Mankiewicz, the screenwriter actually said this, but it's a line from the Fincher movie Mank that always like stuck with me when he's like, when he says, you cannot capture a man's entire life in two hours. All you can hope is to leave the impression of one. And when you take that line and you think about the ruthless narrative efficiency that happens from when like, uh, you know, little Z rapes knockout Ned's girlfriend in front of him, shoots up his house and murders his family. Mm -hmm. And then like knockout from the moment knockout Ned steps into Carrot's place into that apartment. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, hey, listen, I'm, I want to join you so we can like get. So we can get back at Lil Z, but I ain't do like I'm not doing any of that hood shit. I'm not gonna kill anybody. To like the moment that he murders that guy in the bank, the security yeah. guard, right? the, the security guard in the guy, bank, yeah. who is whose son subsequently kills him, like and seals his fate. Yeah, that is two minutes. Two, two minutes, minutes on of, screen. Two yeah. minutes on screen. It's a and tight like, movie. And like when you think about that, and it's like choosing the moments that sum up a man's life. They managed to do that so eloquently and like and so emotionally compact, like 
just it's so emotionally triggering because you even see like the leaps and bounds it's like we're not killing anybody and then like you know the guy pulls the gun and carrot saves him and he's like you sure and then you realize that there's exceptions to the rule and it's just going from like you know i'm not going to be a hood we're not going to murder innocent people yeah. to i murdered an innocent security guard and my seat my fate is sealed the way yeah. the way that Two his is incredible yeah. yeah the way that his line moves so yeah. quickly from like i like i'm just in this to get back at little z yeah, yeah. i'm not gonna be a hood and even before he leaves that room because yeah. carrots even is like no we're not doing that you're gonna be a hood yeah yeah, yeah. and he's like all right fine i'll be a hood. yeah and and then okay but i'm not killing innocent people yeah, and mm-hmm. then he's, he he, he saves that. one. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then the next time he he doesn't, and he cares. He's just like, yep. Yeah, yeah. Like, but like that's the thing, right? You totally buy into that progression of events. Yeah, and like, well, it also kind of puts in perspective how quickly Ned's life changed. Like Ned's life changed in a night. Like that's it. Yeah, but I mean, like, I don't. I think that montage is more than just like a week of heists. You know, like well, yeah. I'm yeah. talking about yeah. like the, yeah. the night of the party. Oh yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah, that like sent that all down. took that all took yeah. like an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just wild. It's just so well done. Yeah, you know, because yeah. you feel all of it. And you you totally understand what that character is coming from, and like you're just like, this this makes sense. And yep. This is very tragic. Well, mm-hmm. and also the the structure of the the framing device of the whole movie is you know um, rocket. Uh, or mm-hmm. the author of, of the book, you know, telling this story. And so when you get moments like that to where, you know, when you're telling a story that's this long, mm-hmm. you know, you you tell the important details and that's it. Yeah. You yeah, know, but- and so you're like making the making those connections. And so to do that really cleanly on screen is super impressive. And that's why this movie has like so much weight behind it, because like it has that like it is that like efficient at narrative yeah. that like. Knockout Ned is nowhere near a main character, but we feel like we've understood his entire life and and it was told within the span of five minutes of screen time. Well, again, that's why I like Rocket as a narrator. Like he kind of like frames a lot of these people as like folk heroes and folk villains in the case of Little Z. And also how we meet Knockout Ned on screen in the first yeah, the first time. They like, choose not to rob him. Yeah, it's yeah. Cool so it's, it rocked, and Rocket is, is Rocket and who, who was, which buddy was it? Um, Rocket and one of his buddies are deciding to be like, no, you know what? Yeah, I'm, let's get into some hood stuff too. Like that's the only yeah. way to get ahead. And then he goes to rob the bus that Knockout Ned works at, and Knockout Ned he's like, oh, I don't know, he's just kind of a cool guy. I couldn't yeah. do it. Yeah, uh, he does seem and they really go, cool. Yeah, yeah that's we'll another, talk about that's yeah. another great montage. We'll talk there. about yeah. Knockout Ned later. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. A, that's another great montage that is, um, you know, that night where they can't bring themselves to be criminals. I it's, love that. It's yeah. really fun. Again, just to like, your point, it's funny. They go to the store yeah. and like, I'm going to rob a guy. Mm, nah, you're yeah. an all right guy. I'm not going to do it. And then they go to rob the bus. Nah, I can't do it. And then they're going to rob this guy that's just asking for directions and they end up smoking a joint with him and like yeah. riding around town. And even the movie head fakes this in that because they, they get in the car with this guy and then they cut to a crime scene. Cops finding a body yeah. on the side of the road. And then we look up and it's them driving past with the guy having a joint, like having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> like even the movie head fakes us into thinking that like, oh, they did it. Look, yeah. Yeah. no, nope, yeah. they didn't do it. Yeah. But it's also just a good parallel because like if you watch the movie, like thinking about the fact that like Rocket and Lil Z basically had like the same circumstances, same upbringing. Came from exactly the same yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. Like one is just not a killer, not a criminal. And one is. Yeah. And one ends up getting one ends up dying and one ends up possibly getting out. Is there anything in this movie that doesn't work, like stands out as something that's like, nah, that, that I see what you did, but no, thank you? I do. So first of all, I actually think, uh, notice all the scenes that we've brought up are not from like the first half hour. Mm. Um, I do think that probably could have been trimmed a little bit. Um, the story of the the Tinder trio. The, the Tinder story trio. Of, of yeah, Rocket's yeah. older brother and, and yeah. his gang. I definitely think it's necessary to like basically be immersed in this neighborhood and this life. Uh, it could have been tightened a little well, I mean, bit. And right? thinking about how how, like, how efficiently they handled Knockout Ned's story to then spend 25 minutes or whatever on on their older brother. Like, yeah. Yeah. Of, like, but, is, and like, that's not the character you remember either. It's not like well, all those guys are dead, but you know yeah. what? But it's, on, yeah. on, honestly, yeah. the stuff I take away from the beginning isn't so much the characters of the people, but of the neighborhood. Right. Cause mm-hmm. like, it's like unpaved streets, you know, you can see the sky and stuff like that. in like those early ones. And then yeah. by the end of that movie, it's like built up it's and all like concrete, it's all concrete. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like, the neighborhood ages with them. And I think like it does a very good job in the beginning to visually set it up as like a younger, simpler time. And then the more 
developed, you know, like the more um, like the more developed the country gets, doesn't necessarily make that neighborhood any better. As mm-hmm. a matter of fact, it only makes it worse, and yeah. they kind of get like caged in. And when it's like small and open, and all those neighborhoods, like you know, it feels like the clay streets and stuff like that, all looks like really good, and like it just sets 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 up such a dramatic visual contrast to where the film is. Yeah, right. it does start really visually bright. You're yeah. right. Yeah. It's just bright, bright orange. And those those buildings actually looked pretty, like, kind new. of new. Yeah. 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 Um, but then, yeah, there are, all, are also all those little characters and all those little side plots, like the like the woman giving sex tips about the banana. It was funny. <laughs> yeah, it, was funny. it was very <laughs> funny. But then, like, I'm not entirely sure what... I guess that led to Goose so, yeah, taking off. It led to... Uh, Shaggy's or death too. Shaggy's death. Yeah, because then police came uh, where they n- normally weren't. Yeah, because that um, was that was a moment where Shaggy was trying to get out. Yeah, and and that's why he couldn't essentially, he couldn't. essentially yeah. because that because uh, that woman was killed. I also kind of wish the women were a little more well developed. Like I understand yeah. like their role isn't in this uh, movie to like lead the gangs, but you have gangster movies where the women are pretty well developed. Yeah, I mean. Um, uh, Angelica like, has like that, some good moments. Like that, yeah, like she that, does. That one movie, uh, what's it called? Oh yeah, Goodfellas. Goodfellas. <laughs> exactly. That's a good example. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's a good example. <laughs> Lorraine Bracco. Yeah. It's another. It's another uh, Pulp Fiction comparison that doesn't hold up. Um, the uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, there's nothing. There's nothing at all. I, I don't mind. Yeah, I wouldn't mind losing a little bit of, the, of that opening, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's hard because like the the movie as a whole, like looking at it, just it it doesn't. It's it's so affecting and so I kind of don't ever want to watch it again. Really? In, in some ways. Like it's it's fun in some moments yeah. and there's just some moments that are just so rough that yeah. I don't need to go back there anymore. Yeah. Um but it's an incredible it's that just speaks to how well it's made. And there that's that's part of the the thing that I struggle with a little bit with this movie is like at what point is it like at what point is it a an incredibly affecting and really well made film? Like at what point does it go up and start towing the line of just a little bit, um, you know, uh, sensationalizing some things and exploitive? Well, that's like when I was like kind of looking back at a lot of the reviews. Does it tow that line and like, is that what I'm reacting to, or am I reacting to the filmmaking that's presenting a really upsetting, you know, uh, circumstance? So it's there's part watching it again for this. I, I kind of walked away with some of that feeling that I don't remember having when I watched it for the first time several years ago. But mm-hmm. I do understand that. And like when I was like kind of like looking up old reviews, the people who didn't like it, that was kind of like one of their main criticisms. Like it was just exploitative and hard to watch. Well, that's the thing about like if we're going to talk about Goodfellas again, like yeah. watching a bunch of a bunch of mobsters from Jersey or wherever do do yeah. mobster yeah. shit like they decided to be there they wanted to be crooks yeah they, you know it's their choice and whatever happens to them is on them and that's it full stop mm-hmm. whereas these kids don't have a choice and so to even have a little bit of that like good fellas sort of vitality and energy around like this is the life that i love and i've always wanted to be a gangster mm-hmm. um their downfall is you know, I don't know. I mean, in- injecting a little bit of that Goodfellas energy into their scenario where they have no way out and they had mm-hmm. no choice from the begin with. Like, there's a version of this movie that I totally understand that criticism of just like, eh, this feels distasteful. So I, let me ask yeah. you this question. How do you feel about it in terms of The Wire? Which, by the way, season one of The Wire would have came out either this year or the Around next time, year. Yeah, right? Yeah. And like season one of The Wire kind of toys with those exact same things, right? Because mm-hmm. like season one's all about, you know, Baltimore, right? Like it's the birth, that's like the, you know, the television birth of Michael B. Jordan. He's Wallace. Like he gets it in yeah. that season. And mm-hmm. like that season is all about how like those people had no other, cho- like yeah. that, yeah. like those people have no other choice but to enter that life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it actually, now that I'm saying this out loud, it's, is very similar. Yeah, no, that's I, I do understand that criticism of, you know, it feeling kind of hopeless, like you can't get out. Um, but to me, that was always the point. That's why I still really uh, am positive on this movie. Um, and I think you should be able to tell stories like that and have them be real. And, and yeah. And the other the other side of the thing is like these, you know, 
the kids in that favela, like this was their only option. And yeah. for all of those runs to be like, yeah, I'm gonna be like little Z. I'm gonna kill yeah. some people. I'm gonna, like, this is what their life is. And obviously that's, and you know, Fernando Morales has said as much too. He's like, I'm a middle-class dude. Like yeah. I've never been there. I don't know what this is like. I'm fascinated by this world. And like, and, you know, for me, like I, I, I don't know. Like that could be the most realistic portrayal of anything that's ever happened. You know, you as know far it's as I know. very like, real. I do like, not know. Yeah. yeah. Because that is very much not my life or my experience. And, you know, I'm the last person that should be, you know, saying like, well, this is kind of. Distasteful. Well, that's why he brought in Katya Lund. Exactly. Was, yeah. Exactly. To his to his great credit for mm-hmm. that. Like he found somebody that understood it, um, mm-hmm. you know. And so it's it's. Uh, yeah. But for me, it's one of those movies that's that's so tough to watch. It in is. Parts yeah. that, you know, it's hard not to it's it's hard to revisit. And that's why I kind of, that's why I brought up like the moments of lem- levity, mm-hmm. um, which are like kind of nice breathers, but also make the bad moments worse yeah. because you've all, you're also more endeared to these characters. Yeah. Um, you've seen them in their good moments and now you're seeing them in your, their really terrible moments. Yeah. <laughs> Agora vamos fazer um corredor ali? Corredor. 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 Todo mundo aqui é sem carro. É, pô, carro. Bora, vamos embora, meu. Tu vai ficar fora, cara. Chega pra lá, meu. Irmão, tu é maluco, rapaz? Fala direito, né? Fala que desculpa, cara, desculpa. Mano. Chega, oh, chega ali, você. Fala direito, por favor. Mais um, mais um. Mais um, mais um. Mais um, mais um. Mais um. Uh, any more art of the scene business? Um, I also really like the ending. Uh, basically, how it just basically comes full circle with the war between Ned and Lil Z, and they're both getting their comeuppance in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ned is killed by basically the first time he kills an innocent person. His yeah, that's son, what, that's innocent person's end. son, kills him, and then the runs kill Lil Z. And the way that it all plays out is very cool too, because like with Rocket kind of like looking through this like hole in the wall and you can't fully see everything when um, Little Z is uh, not getting arrested but paying off the cops and then dies by the run. So I think that's very well shot too. And then the choice to to not publish the picture of the cops right. taking the bribe, but yeah. but yeah. also publishing the picture of yeah. of Lil Z being of Little Z's body. Yeah. Um, Again, one of the reasons why I'll defend Rocket as a good character because yeah. like that's one yeah, of that's the moments a smart where he had, move. yeah, it's a yeah. smart move, and it's a moment where he had to make a choice. It's a moment where he couldn't be passive. Yeah. And he made a choice. That that's all his agency. Yeah. In that, in that moment, for yeah. sure, for sure. Um. Well, let's put this movie on some lists. Let's do it. To start with the the movie the list that it's currently on on Cinefix, Lil Z has been on the top ten villains list twice. Has the first, he? The Good. first time we did it, and I just he's a great villain. Revisited movie list very recently, and I, I couldn't bounce him off of there. He's so chaotic and so crazy, chaotic. and that that moment of humanity that we get to see around Benny's death uh, or prior to Benny's death is like that makes him a great villain to me because like. You can see what he wants and you can see there's tragedy in there and you can see that like maybe there was a different path for him at some mm-hmm. point somewhere. But, you know, and that's why he's such a great villain. Yep. It's not just that he's a psycho, which he is. And we see that in that really great scene that we talked about earlier with little dice, just gleefully yep. killing a bunch of people. Um, but like a very he, human psycho, a very oh, yeah. human psycho. Yeah. yeah. He just wants a girlfriend, maybe <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Maybe something. He just, yeah. he just wants, he wants someone I to love him. I think happiness yeah. I think is all he wants. Yeah. Um, it was also on a list that we did called uh, Top 10 Most Affecting Editing Moments. Ooh. Ooh. And uh, specifically, it was re- the opening was referenced. Mm. Like the opening titles. Like chasing the chicken. Chasing the chicken. That is a good edit. Like, even the, yeah. the, the way that knife sounds are cut in. Yeah. And it's, all, it's just bouncing all over the place. And it gives it's such a, a perfect intro into the world and into the, honestly, the energy that we're going to be a part exactly. of. Exactly. And like the, the style of the movie that, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was also on a top 50 movies of all time list we made back in 2016. Can't remember why we did top 50 movies of all time. Yeah. Um, Curious what seems else like a list. half of a round number, but, um, <laughs> but it was number 14. You guys got that. to 50 and we're like, we're not going like, any further. You know, that's enough. <laughs> we don't have um, enough movies 50, yet. Top 53 movies of top all time. Top 53 movies of all time. <laughs> But uh, but it was number fourteen wow. on that list back in twenty sixteen. Okay. So we'll see where Dan's got it with his bananas uh, yeah. math. Um, and then I think indie films you got an honorable mention. Ooh, we need top ten indie. I got, films. I got lists I would throw it on. What you got? I got uh, foreign crime. Foreign which, crime. Yeah, yeah, foreign crime would be a good one. I had crime full stop. I mean, it yeah, is, but say, it's already on the crime full stop. You is. know, so like maybe we should be making a list <laughs> yeah. where we just get rid of all those English movies mm-hmm. and. Uh, 
focus on some of the good ones that you know you have to read yep uh I also would put it on the list. I am the saddest that Cinefix hasn't made yet, and we missed the perfect time to do it, which was the top ten cocaine movies. Top ten cocaine movies. Oh, you mean for Cocaine Bear? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We, didn't, we, we didn't get around to that for Cocaine Bear. I mean, I'm sure there'll be another chance. Cocaine Bear too. I'm wow. sure it'll happen. It did cocaine very well. Cocaine Bear also. <laughs> <laughs> When's it coming out on DVD? Eh, it's probably already out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, low budget bangers. Mm-hmm. Definitely you know, a low budget banger. It's a low budget banger. Again, but like like we said, like not as low budget as I thought. Three million dollars is not a lot of money. Yeah, no. Even it's not. in two thousand and two. Yeah. Uh, and uh, best Scorsese clones. Scorsese clones would be would be an interesting. That would be an interesting subgenre of list altogether. Just picking like because you yeah. could do Hitchcock clones, yeah. which is I guess just an entire. Uh, 1998 so, Psycho, just all the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Clone the clone of clones. Yeah. The clone of all clones. Um, I, I crime films for sure. Yeah. Um, we've done. I don't know that we've done like top ten crime films. I know we did top ten crimes. Yes. And I've also done heists and like building a heist out of parts of yep. different heist movies. I remember that one. Um, but just just straight up movies about crime. Like this has got to be on there. Well, I mean, yeah. do we do a drug dealing? Like this is this, this is a top ten drug dealing yeah. movie. Yeah. Well, also another one. I think I brought this up during the Parasite episode, but if there's a most stressful movies list, I think this would go on. It's <laughs> uh, very stressful at times. Like, it can be. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever done a montage list? Speaking of which, no, no. I, we've done a couple of different editing themed lists. I don't think that we've done best use of montage. Are you ready for a montage? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Rocky Four right at the top. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and, uh, oh. Any number of I mean, uh, we have se- to, sequences we have, from this movie. We have to also just like throw in, uh, you know, Team America, which wrote the song about Are you the ready import- for montage. Yeah, yeah, about the importance of montages in cinema. <laughs> Literally wrote the not the book, but the song. Not the song. About, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, also, party scenes. Benny's. Yeah. I mean, that would be a Benny's death would be a party scene. Best party wow, scene. Wow, way, to, pick, way, to, way to pick the downer, the downer part. <laughs> it's yeah. a really yeah. bad. Well, part. that yeah, would be yeah. that would be one of the categories if we're doing yeah. best. Yeah. How we Down, you break yeah. down best party, party scenes? Pooper There's lit. one yeah. that like you know, where somebody's in over their head, yeah. where somebody doesn't want to be there, where somebody gets just tragically shot. <laughs> Do we? I think we talked. <laughs> yeah. To, yeah, I think we talked about this during the Sunset Boulevard episode. But is there a best voiceover list? Uh, we've done narr. Did we do narration? I, it's that has been on my list of like potential episodes yeah. for literally years. And I, it, to be honest, I can't remember if we've done it yet or not. Yeah, maybe I'm just so familiar with looking at at the top of that doc. Clint that always wanted. Yeah, what am I gonna do next? You basically did it. Yeah. yeah. Clint always wanted to make a narrator list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it feels a little self serving yeah. for me to do a it. for me to do a narrator <laughs> list. One of you guys is gonna have to do it for me. Um. But yeah, I mean, listen, I there's there's a handful of I mean, we've never we've never done a just a foreign language film list. This is this is probably one of our favorites, but yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. That's such a broad category. It's so broad. Um any other lists you want to put it on? What are the, what are your best best quotes from this movie? He's such a cool guy. He's such a cool guy. <laughs> that's like yeah. the one I always come back to. Just he's such a cool guy. Oh, he's such a cool guy. Yeah. You was, that, was that the runs after they after he gave him the, the yeah, yeah, but then also um, Rocket when he first meets Ned. Oh right. He's right. too cool he's a guy. Such a cool yeah. guy. You need more than you need more than guts to be a good gangster. You need ideas. <laughs> that well, that's kind of Lil Z's whole thing. Yeah. Like that's yeah. why he rides because he knows how I to mean, work listen, it. He was the first team to think like, why aren't we robbing the brothel? Yeah. 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 No, that's yeah, true. That was his plan. Yeah, it's his plan. But I, it's, like, mine's mine's the poster. My, that's the yeah. It's the you. If you run from the beast, it will catch you. If you stay, the beast will eat you. Yeah. Which is just like I mean, that's a great. It's a nice little little eloquent kind of poetic way to put the the theme of this whole movie. And then it, Rocket says something says as much in in different in different word in the middle of the of the movie somewhere. Um, so let's move on to some things you didn't know, Alex. You oh. got some. Did you you and Tayo do some some work on things you didn't know this week? Well, Tayo did, yes. Great. Um, and we've already talked about some of the, these, Yo-oh. so I'm just gonna <laughs> play it on the fly. So we can we, we'll have to play along with the with uh, the torf of it all. Yes, yeah. we'll have to play with the torf a bit. Uh, so this is true or false? Uh, things you didn't know. Uh, I'm gonna say some things that they may or may not know, and that you may or may not know, and we're gonna see if it's true or false or not. Here we go. Uh, Feel free to play along at home. Yeah, we please do. We won't be able to keep score though. Yeah, you can lie. It's fine. Um, all right. 
To prepare the child actor who Lil Z shoots in the foot, uh, acting coach Fatima Toledo told him to harness a moment in his life where he was the most scared. That moment turned out to be a time where the actor almost drowned. Uh, she told him to pretend that feeling moved to his foot. True or false in that runt scene? True. Hmm. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I'll go advice. with true. That, yeah. feel, that feels like a thing that you could talk to a kid. Unless it was a different moment. Yeah, unless he got I, hit it, by a car. He's actually, <laughs> just, he's actually just, everything yeah. was true right up until the yeah, moment. Yeah. He's <laughs> actually uh, false. He's actually channeling the memory when he got hit by a car, yeah, not yeah. drown, you idiot. <laughs> so, so true. True, yeah. True. I'm going true. Well, you've caught on to me and Tayo's tricks because that's, it's false, and that's exactly why. No, it's uh, partially oh, false. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Listen, you got to get a little creative. Half false. Uh, so uh, it was a different injury. It, well, yes. The time he got shot in his different traumatic he was Not drowning right he uh imagined a toothache oh huh. yeah sometimes that's, yeah. that's a more charmed life than i think i know yeah, <laughs> yeah. <that> would... <laughs> It's not quite that as is, scary uh, as drowning. Yeah, that's that's decently charming, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, at the age of 22, in an interview with Brazilian newspaper Fole, the child actor recalled that Fatima had actually asked the actor playing Lil Z to scare him with a gun in a dark bedroom. He also states that she told him to think about his mother drowning to death. Uh, Fatima insists that none of this happened, and the actor might have created a fantasy. Um hmm. And she states that she did show him a gun and asked if he knew what it was. And he said, yes, I know. And this one is a toy. So pretty <laughs> wow, <laughs> pretty harrowing yep. child actor experience. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to take that as a miss. We are half right. I feel yeah, like we were half you know, right. yeah. I, it's a miss. All right. True or false? <laughs> All right, the film was actually not shot in the uh, City of God slum as it was too dangerous. It was shot in a neighboring, less dangerous area. That's that is true. true. Yeah, that is true. And I, th I feel like you guys knew that. They yeah. in, didn't they also have to hire local because they security guards wouldn't go with them. So they had to hire like local people to. Oh, sort of like the how the Rolling Stones hired the Hells Angels for security that one time. I don't know. Oh Yeah, that went really well for them, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That, that wasn't oh. grounds to make a documentary. Uh, live commentary from Tayo. Yes, they did. You were right. Hey, hey yeah. look at that. Yeah. I'm, so that makes up for the half true on the first one. Yeah. It's no, extra. I, you I, know I what? I, half a point on the first one, point and a half on the second one. I'm two for two. All right. Two for two. Torf. I'll let you guys have it. Two for Torf. Two for Torf. <laughs> All right. Uh, director Fernando Morales. Morales. And his crew handpicked around 100 kids from the actual city of God and placed them into a makeshift actor's workshop for several months. That is true. Also true. I feel yes, like you sir. guys knew that one again. Yeah, I can, I can go into a little more depth on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, feel free. Yeah. So, like, uh, he uh, basically, like, in an interview, he cited, like, Mike Lee and Ken Loach about how they do that script. And he's like, he never gave the actors a script. And I'm, I'm saying, quote here, I would just tell them the intentions behind each scene and the character and the character and let them improvise. So 70% of what you see and hear on screen, they created themselves. They uh, took, like, a couple hundred kids put them through a improv acting lesson acting camp for like six months distilled it down picked the actors out of that camp and then did another four months of training with the actors to get them into the headspace for the roles specifically yeah that's nuts that is Isn't so that nuts wild? they started yeah. they started like casting for this movie a year before they yeah. actually shot it it's wild yeah like i like it's one of those movies where it's like i cannot believe this movie was made <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they really did some wild, wild stuff with this. All right. Oh. Except for Carrot. He was already an actor. Oh. Yeah. Wait, there's another fact that Tayo was telling me. Uh, before City of God, uh, Leandro uh, Firmino, who's Lil Z, uh, had no ambitions to be an actor. He only went to the audition to keep his friend company. Aw. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And then that's, a, that's a real, uh, uh, real radioactive uh, or Fallout Boy kind of origin story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the part which is exactly what i'd be saying to you if you weren't an inch too short mm -hmm. all right next next torf next torf next torf did we did we even say true or false on that one did you, you did give us yeah a you, we, we, were, we were right you guys we elaborated really, even more yeah, on yeah, the truth yeah you guys knew more than i did yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right this has to do with my favorite nickname in the film knockout ned uh, in the English subtitled version of the film, the character uh, Mane Galanha is called Knockout Ned. The name was changed to avoid a lawsuit from the family of the real inspiration for Mane Galanha, who did not approve of the film. Oh, oh. what was the, uh, the real name? Oh, yeah, Mane, Mane Galanha. I have to. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with true. I'm going to. I feel hmm. like this is. I'm going two truths and a lie, and I feel like you burned your lie. 
in the beginning. Okay. I got plenty of lies. I honestly have no idea. Well, you got to pick gonna, one. I'm just going to go with false then. All because right. Or do you, did you need us both to agree? I would like it. I would prefer okay, it. Okay, I'll go true, but yeah. I, again, yeah. I don't like it. What? <laughs> Who <laughs> duly noted, and you should have stuck to it because it's false. I oh. knew it. Um, he did like that. He, he did like was his name knock, was knockout. Knock knock yeah, so his, his name was knockout. Uh, okay. No, so the name was actually changed to avoid confusion since Mane Galanha means chicken manual. Uh, in the U.S., a chicken is a coward, uh, but in Brazil, it means womanizer, and the character also stole chickens. Uh, the term knockout means handsome in, in American slang. Sure does. Yeah, so it works. Okay, I, I yeah. thought he was a fighter. <laughs> what a chicken well there's also another I, th- i'm just uh pulling this one out uh it's not true or false there's another cool like like translation thing uh i read that like you know that scene when benny gets like a makeover basically and he comes out yeah, and he's yeah. like i'm a playboy now yeah makeover, uh, makeover, yeah makeover, makeover, his little makeover, makeover scene makeover. um so playboy is that like it's basically a stand-in for a word that doesn't exist in english hmm. um but basically they're like the brazilian word kind of means like preppy pretty boy playboy like okay. upper middle cl- middle class um so that's basically him saying like i'm like, above all this like I, look at me i'm a pretty boy yeah uh, this is just all showing up being like hey guys my dad owns a dealership kind yeah of exactly okay. yeah, yeah got it well you actually lost one all right oh. let's see uh well this one we've already kind of talked about because we've talked about yeah uh the scene where the gang <laughs> prays before the war was not scripted oh yeah 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 i'll yeah. go with you yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's true yeah, and that pretty much went how you probably think it did. Uh, Morales asked if the group was going to pray like they always did before any fight, and then uh, he shot the scene while they were praying. That was another thing that I wanted to talk about in Art of the Scene, actually, which we don't we have to make a big thing out of it now. But like the way that this movie shot at night, I thought was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like proper night and not too like saucy. Like it didn't look like there was a uh, you there, know, there weren't a ton of like like lighting it wasn't a ton of lighting gear around it didn't yeah. seem like it It felt very practically lit but also just the dead of night like I uh, it was you incredible. know what else is really fascinating about that too right like it's all those night scenes are so well shot earlier in the movie you know when we're talking about things we could cut there's one shot in particular where you look at it and there's like all the stars in the sky so it's like there's no light pollution mm-hmm. you know and then it gets built up and they lose all that and it's just you know weird dark just, yeah, yeah. Yep. it's just dark now all right, I got one more for you. One, you got a torf for us? I, I don't, I'm not. I'm not going to torf it. Okay, this, that's your bit. I'm going to just. I'm gonna, <laughs> we'll get to your bit in a second. Dan's bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna just like just. Uh, I don't know if we. This was well before any of our times here, but uh, someone at IGN actually interviewed. Uh, what's his name again? Fernando Morales. Fernando Morales. Yeah. Yeah. Scott B. Scott who B. Shall remain sure. Anonymous. <laughs> All right. Uh, he uh, interviewed the the uh, he interviewed the director and the director said uh, that the um, novel's author was initially dissatisfied with the screenplay, convinced that Morales and co-writer Braulio Mantovani later like was initially dissatisfied with the uh, screenplay, but later when the novelist became a screenwriter of his own, he began to change his mind about the adaptation. Oh, he's huh. like, I know how yeah. hard it is now. I get it. Yeah. He didn't like it at first, but then he had to write a script himself. He had like, to you, know what? <laughs> like, you know what? You, guys <laughs> you know what? You did okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Good that's work, funny. everybody. Yeah. That's a fun little idea. Uh, Torf. 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 Yeah. Torf. I made that all up. No, <laughs> son of a bitch. There is no Scott B. No, I'm kidding. That's all true. <laughs> yeah, it was written by Scott Calora. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's shift gears. Who's who's the MVP of this movie for you guys? Alex, who's your who's your movie MVP? Oh my God! Wait, somehow I didn't think about this, but I'm gonna. Well, honestly, it's tough. <laughs> it is tough. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's even two or three obvious. I mean, I guess Fernando Morales, yeah. Cachilan, like yeah. yeah. If like if I could give Those them a joint, maybe like I mean, the academy like, says no, you can't. I know. I was gonna say <laughs> they willed this thing into existence. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they really did. Oh, that's yeah. really tough. Yeah. 
Because all the actors are phenomenal, and they're not like they weren't even. Well, Lil Z is an icon. That's so, the thing. Like, Lil he's Z, also, mm-hmm. he might be the MVP for me because, yeah. like, he is like you, like Cinefix said, one of the best movie villains. Like, mm-hmm. and he just his performance just sells that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm happy to give it to to any of those. Um, I think. Um, I mean, Benny. Is is getting my Judd Hirsch oh. award? Yeah, for oh, the for mine movie. too. He also yeah. gets my Judd Hirsch he's, award because he's like, it's not his movie by any stretch of the imagination, but he's so thoroughly the so reason. Cool. He, yeah. He's such so a cool he's guy. So such cool, a cool bro. guy. He's so what a cool he's guy. so cool. Yeah. I just dropped my first f bomb. Yeah, first one, <laughs> first one, first one of the whole show. Yeah. Um, Mark get down. a get a squeaky driver's Retro. marker. <laughs> Mark it down. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, Benny, the fact that he is so integral to the emotional stakes of the movie without being a main character himself is, I think, really, really cool. Exactly. And like, he's like the one you would want to be friends with if you really had to pick. Like, who wouldn't want to sure. be friends with Benny? But and also, he, you're he not killed gonna, some yeah. dudes, too. He did. Yeah. yeah. Like, he wasn't a pushover, despite nope. Lil he Z kind of yeah. saying that he was. He was just ready to be done. Yeah. Uh, but also Knockout Ned. Great little, like I said earlier, like kind of this like tragic folk hero, yeah. I think is really interesting. And I think in terms of essential viewing for anybody involved in this movie, absolutely. Yeah. I don't think anybody's oh, yeah. come close to, to putting... No shade to the two popes, but yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All respect due to the two popes uh, and the work that they continue to do in this in this world. I mean, because they made another movie and a, and a series. Yep. That was um, one of my city, dwarfs, city uh, of, but we already knew that. Yeah, yeah. City of Men mm-hmm. uh, as another movie and a, and a series. Um, so they kept working in this world mm-hmm. uh, and doing good work there. Yeah. For my, and they made a documentary, which I surprisingly haven't watched. The City of God 10 years later. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I think we've got time for one last segment. Uh, and this week it is the most appropriate segment we could possibly do. Calibro, you want to walk us through this nonsense? Yeah, so, you know, in this, in this Brazilian film, Brazilian crime drama about children dealing drugs, we have to ask ourselves the question that's on everybody's mind. Sure. Mm-hmm. Who would Nicolas Cage play? That's what we're all he was, thinking. he was cast in this role. So glad you brought this Damn. up. I didn't want to say yeah. it, yeah. but like, I mean, thank we you. The whole gonna... time I was just watching this, I'm like, there's the cage, there's the cage. I... Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas Cage, Cage could play. Yeah. He could clumps this entire movie. Yeah. You know, just yeah. let him play everybody. <laughs> um. <laughs> I just love how this is an especially bad example of the segment because, like, there's also just no actors in this movie. So imagine yeah. just like randomly throwing an A-lister to be like carrot or something. I mean, listen, I, you gotta you gotta sneak him in there as a cameo. I yeah. think yeah. he could be. Uh, like he could cop? be. The, he could be the guy in the car. Oh. Uh, or he could be the arms dealer. Yeah. Or he could be the guy in the car that they smoke a joint with instead of robbing. Um, I was going, through, I was going at this with the the reboot angle. Mm-hmm. Re, I'm, I have to reboot and time travel in order yep. to make this Nicolas Cage appropriate. Okay, right? it's some some real Nick yeah, Cage yeah, gymnastics. We, yeah, yeah. Re, which we're all willing to do. Really, but, like, yeah. we have to. That's like, what we're here for. Yeah, we have to go back to like '86. You know, we're talking like Valley Girl mm-hmm. Nicolas Cage. You know, I think he could do. I think he could do. Uh, a great knockout Ned, you know, if he channels some of that uh, he could. bad lieutenant energy, he sure. could do he could do a great knockout Ned, or he could have done he could have done a, a Jersey a New Jersey version of Little Z, but in the movie as it exists, there is yeah. If City of God gets yeah. its Americanized remake yeah. or whatever, yeah. and it's like a Jersey Shore like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jersey, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sure, why not? Yeah, he. You know who he also. I mean, listen, it, it, this isn't above Hollywood to do that. No, they're, no, they're, no. Frankly, I, they're yeah. creatively bankrupt enough right now. Frankly, yeah. I am shocked. And honestly, to your point earlier, like, had they not done the wire right yep. about the same time, I bet we would have gotten yeah a city of God, except in you know if it was Baltimore or Detroit or something like that. That I, had we not already been doing that with the wire in a really effective way, we probably would have gotten a remake. Yeah, yeah. that would have been what thirty percent as good. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think, the, I think yeah. the wire is 100 percent as good as this. Oh, the wire for oh, sure. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. No, I'm talking about like if Harvey Weinstein had had gotten to do an American <laughs> remake of this movie. Yeah. Um. What about the? He could have also been the photographer. Yeah, he could have. Oh, 
yeah. could have also been the photographer that, no, that's, that, that Rocket would, yeah. kind of looked up to. He saw yeah. his name in print, and then he actually meets him when he's working at the newspaper. That's a good one. That's I think, a good maybe Nicholas Cage could have been there. I don't yeah. think. It, I don't. I think that actually makes the movie worse. Though. It would definitely I, be if, jarring if yeah. Nicholas Cage pops up in there. That that is just this side of a Matt Damon and Interstellar kind of yeah. the worst like, cameo. Wait, what the worst well, cameo? It just of all time. like it would just take you out because it feels yeah. so real. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, suddenly yeah. Nicholas and Cage suddenly Nicholas Cage is there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and and my vote no nick cage yeah no. I, I i have to jump through multiple hurd- hurdles to, it's, to, figure, to figure out a way to make this work with nicholas cage yeah. it's a real tough sell to get there and even yeah. when you get there it doesn't it's feel like good. it's still not good we gotta, we gotta reboot yeah. this in the past yeah, yeah. exactly sorry no city exactly. of cage so we gotta make cage this, of god we gotta make this great movie whiter yeah. <laughs> well also just more famous yeah <laughs> yeah less less grounded in yeah. actual people's problems yeah. um Okay, so uh, what do we think? Masterpiece? We're out. We're out, we're out. Yeah, definitely. We got one, yeah. one tiny little bit of it. Is this yeah. a masterpiece? Yes. Yeah. You think? Yes. I would say so. Okay. Do you, do you disagree? He's not going to watch it again. It's, so. I mean, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll never find <laughs> out because I'm not going to watch it again. Um, I, I mean, yeah, sure. Wow. You know, I mean, wow. real, depends, real convincing. Party sure. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's great. It's really, really great. Mm-hmm. It's it's very solid, and it deservedly gets a, a lot of credit for doing a lot of things. Um, I don't know. I, maybe it's just because I don't want to watch it again that I'm I don't want to call it a masterpiece. I mean, which is not a fair thing because it's probably the fact that it is a masterpiece that makes me not want to watch it again that's because it's one so of the why it's a so impactful yeah. that I just I'm like you know what I'm good yeah. I'm yeah. good. So uh, so yeah, I'll go with yes. Uh, where was the masterpiece it? you'll never watch again? The masterpiece yeah. that I'm, yeah, That's I'm an set. Interesting list. Yeah. Oh. I know, right? Movies that I, movies yeah. that we once once we did a well, that wasn't a list; it was a conversation. But once we did a thing about movies that are hard to recommend to people, uh, oh. I used to buy people pink flamingos as a Christmas gift. Yeah. That's how <laughs> how good of a friend I was yeah. of theirs. So. That's that. I can see you doing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, Alex, where did this end up on your list? 37. Number 37. Yep. Top half. Okay. I like, like well I, into I, the top half, almost top third. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I saw this movie in college and just thought like, wow, I just saw a really fantastic movie yep. and it stuck with me ever since. So I, I have re- rewatched it a few times. Um, yeah, no solid 37. Solid number 37. Cal, mm-hmm. do you have this on your list? Yeah. So it's number 50 on my list. It's right 50. In, 50. It's so right, right exactly in the middle. The right sweet the middle. spot. The, the fulcrum of your seesaw. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's right there. <laughs> Listen, you're going to see a lot of these kind of movies on my list because I'm I'm, this this, this is a movie that I'm a total sucker for. Well, this is this movie. I'm not a total sucker for this movie, this kind of movie and still on my list. Like, I don't have a lot of other crime movies on my list. So this really stood out for me. Okay, so 37 for you. 50 for me 50 for you. I did not have it on my list. So that means Um, you feel okay about that? I it's I a, do. It's a masterpiece. He's I never going to watch it's again. A, it's a sort of masterpiece, but I'm I'm okay not having it yeah. on my list. I think I think it did. It obviously it did a lot of things really well. We talked a lot about it. It's it's very good. Uh, I think there's a lot of other movies that did some similar things really well also. So I don't know. I'm fine with it not being on my list. All right. All right. Uh, can we get? Can we confirm? Did Dan have this on his list? He did not. He did not. He did not. No. Okay. So it's just an Alex and Cal joint. Just yeah. Not- 37 on the strength of 37 and 50 that gets you to number 49 hey. that act- yeah. that math actually kind of checks out it to me 37 right. and two 50. people putting it in their top half but like not that high in the top right. half. yeah so this just sneaks into the top 100 top half top half top 100 yeah. oh. 49 um, 49 city of god 49 feels still- feels right uh great well thank you for talking about city of god with me thank you for listening to us talk about city of god thank you to our producer tayo yakin technical director ryan franzen's back there working real hard uh dp jamie parcels casually sitting behind the cameras uh dan was not here so yeah specifically so no thank you to dan not thank you to dan <laughs> Uh, But thanks again to all of you guys, and we will see you next time right here on the Cinefix Top 100. 